Greg is here. So with this annoying manual work of setting up the item resource script over here, we can simply mark the item class as global class. And this will add it to the selection of creatable resources. All right. With this done, let's clean the testing part of the inventory initialization. Go back to the player inventory. We want to connect the content of the inventory to the panel. For now, let's simply declare a reference field for inventory UI. Reference it. And now pass player inventory to the inventory UI after initializing it by calling a new method called show. Because we will be initializing the panel buttons based on the player inventory, we don't need to call init in the ready. So we want to initialize the inventory panel based on the amount of inventory slots we have in our player inventory. Make it public. And to avoid calls like this with repetitive non-descriptive names, let's rename it into the slots by using the rename function. And to get the amount of slots of the inventory from the list of item slots, we can use count. Inside the inventory, we need to actually initialize the list beyond creating it. Cycle through all the inventory size and add new slots into the list. Let's test this. As you can see, our inventory size will be shown on the screen based on the inventory size parameter. Good. Inside the inventory right now, we store just integers. Instead, we want to store an actual information what is stored in the slot. To store this info, we need a new class called item slot. Inside we will keep a reference to the item we are gonna be storing and quantity of said item inside the slot. Use it inside the inventory list. I call it item slot because it can be reused and used in any cases where you need to store or insert the item. Not only in context of inventories. Good. Let's take a break for now. In the next episode, we will implement an actual inventory interaction.